Nope, you don't need, you don't need a, the... I'm doing legend. He a legend, he a legend, he a legend. 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 Where we have a lot of games to get through, so now it's time for the Rapid Fire Recap! In China, our day began with Invictus Gaming taking on Sunny, and everybody won fun tonight, but Rookie and the squad weren't the shy as they puff puff passed around Sunning, who got smoked 2 to 0. Next up, we had Top Esports and JDG face off in a Spring Finals rematch, and Top Esports was able to continue their hot streak as Knight and 369, damn they're fine, hoping that they win it for me one more time, get go, 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 get go. from the window. Then we're off to Brazil, where Santos took on INTZ, who was INTing. Santos remains undefeated after finding a jackpot of gold somewhere over the rainbow. Tinones was keyed in and dominated Vivo Keyed with an unforgettable LeBlanc performance. BRTT and the boys move to 3-1. Flamengo Esports finally picked up their first win as Your Mamba Boy Blue made his Brazilian debut. Kaboom and Furia faced off in the match of the day, and after a ridiculous number of team fights, Kaboom came out on top and improved to 3 and 1. On the other side of the world, the LEC was finishing off Super Week, and the Mad Lions beat the overachieving SK Gaming side behind the efforts of Does that make me crazy? Does that make me crazy? Schalke was just minding their own business in their match on the third day of the LEC, but Rogue emerged from the shadows and bludgeoned them to death hanging a huge DraftKings performance by finishing them off slowly. Origin forbid off more than they could chew, as Forbiven and the Misfits make up for their embarrassing day one loss with a big upset victory over a top three team in the LEC. Vitality came back to life against G2. You've got to wonder if there was any match fixing going on here, as the 625 favorite was dominated thoroughly and rolled over. In the final game of the LEC Super Week, Fnatic gave their fans an excellent Sunday treat, super beating XL, and no this is Patrick! Now we're going, going, back, back to Cali Cali, where the LCS had their final matches of the weekend. First up, the reigning champions were on Cloud9, led by Niski Business, 
Who chopped off 100 Thieves hands? Bjergsen was cooking with fire on Corky, and that's a speak Gamita Bala picks up his first win back with the team, as Dignitas fed everyone, including their ex Doublelift. Well, at least Doublelift beat one of his old teams this weekend. Team Liquid continued their strong week one, as they closed out Closer and the Golden Guardians with ease. The week's final match in North America featured Counter Logic Gaming, who sabotaged themselves in draft once again, but were luckily facing off against the worst team in North America, the not so immortal Immortals. But the match everyone is talking about took place early this morning in China, where Eastar did their best Road Warriors impersonation. In game one, against Billy Billy Gaming, Wei Yan threw on a Wei Mask, and hey now, he's on E-Star, and the team picked him, Graves, hey now, he's a jungler, takes might get paid, but where to ignite, and Billy Billy Gaming wins game one. E-Star managed to pick the right summoner spells in game two, as the one-eyed man, Wink, carried hard. But Game 3 went the way of Billy Billy Gaming, who smile and wave boys to Wei and his E-Star accomplices. In our final match, Vinividi Vici Gaming disappeared in a cloud of smoke as World Elite proves their elite, led by I'm Hot for Teacher Ma, who broke a ruler over Koma's back. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Michael with League of Items. Uh, and, yeah, so I, I sped up the eSports and everything a little bit. A ton of games to go through. I think I'll do it more like that in the future, where it's more of like a rapid-fire kind of thing. So let me know what you prefer. Like, I, I can still do some stupid jokes and, like, those, like, song bits and stuff like that without, without it taking so long. And hopefully, like, more people actually watch it. So, um... So this is this is where we're at for the season so far. I'm 41 and 22. I'm 15 and 7 in the LPL, 68% win rate. In the CB LOL, I'm 10 and 6, 63% win rate. NALCS, 8 and 2, 80% win rate. LEC, 8 and 7, 53% win rate. And that in the LC, LEC is with like a horrible uh, first day, or maybe first two days. Um, but that, that's 41 and 22 overall for 65 win percent, which is pretty good. Um, so yesterday. In China, we had a wild happening in uh, that E Star and Billy Billy Gaming match. So the jungler picked the wrong summoner spell. He probably just had it up for some reason, and that's why there was a long delay in the beginning of the game because I think they were talking about remaking the game or not, and like what whatever the rules are. Because after the twenty second mark, you're not allowed to trade champions or change summoner spells or do anything like that. So I guess they have a really strict stance on it where you're not allowed to to remake the game, which is pretty stupid. Like, there's no point in playing a game where one of the junglers doesn't have smite because it makes objective control nearly impossible. Like, you can never try to take a dragon or a baron when the other jungler's on the map because they, they'll have an extreme advantage over you. And then also, the jungler's going to fall uh, very far behind in terms of experience in the jungle because every jungler, uh, when they have smite, is able to pick... Um, the jungle items that give you bonus ex bonus experience when you're killing jungle camps so that's a huge mistake by billy billy or uh, by e-star i wish they just restarted the game uh it's a stupid way to win but it made some of my lineups better uh sort of uh interesting interesting that it happened like i said in my video yesterday i thought billy billy gaming was a live dog they looked really good in game three but um i think that e-star is a better team in the long run, it's just that I thought it was a good spot between everyone disliking Billy Billy Gaming and people remembering good things from E-Star from last split, 
and then also the line was off so 33 percent to 74 percent that's just crazy um so yeah i'm happy with that one i did i did end up picking e-star so that's a loss but that's the kind of loss that i can live with because i got some exposure to billy billy gaming on DraftKings. And I ended up going even on DraftKings yesterday because like some inter like some weird lineups took down all the all the tournaments. Uh, Kukumunga from my chat won big yesterday. He came in third place, and um, uh, Gemma won pretty big. He uh, he took down another winner take all four man. And then of course Chris Brown as per usual, uh, winning something. <laughs> he uh, he made a bet on Billy Billy or on World Elite because of my confidence in them yesterday so congrats to all my patrons on their different wins um so let's move forward to the world elite match uh world elite against vici gaming world elite is just a better team than vici gaming in my standings i have them a couple of tiers above vici gaming i think vici people want vici gaming to be good because they have iboy and because they have coma but it's not the meta for them yet I think we are headed in that direction and maybe that'll make them a better team overall and like more consistent and able to play to their win conditions better. But right now I think the game is a little bit faster that a little bit too fast for them and it's perfect for world elite. Uh, so I was on world elite. No problem. So tomorrow we have LGD and DMO. Let me get up DraftKings actually. Um, so the rosters have not been, um, confirmed. I wouldn't be surprised if LGD plays Garvey again tonight to try to get him some more stage time. Uh, I don't think it really changes that much. I guess it does kind of change what the line should be, but they're huge favorites right now. Ooh, they put up the LCK slate. Nice. So I'll do a video on that tomorrow. Wait, that's... Yeah, the 17th. Okay. Um, all right. So we have LGD against Dominus, and we have Top Esports against OMG. LGD against Dominus. Uh, Longshi is probably starting, but I think Garvey has a chance to play against Natural. Peanut and Xiaopeng. Xie against Twyla. Kramer against Helper. And Mark against Mitsuki. I think that LGD is better in every single lane. I saw some people on Twitter talking about Dominus winning. Uh, I don't know if they're joking or if they're trolling or whatever, but LGD is a significantly better team than Dominus, uh, which is reflected in the betting line. Um, it's 86% to 20%, though, which I think is a little overblown. So this is another spot like yesterday where if you're going to bet on a sports book, you're not getting the correct amount of value for LGD. Uh, I think that it's probably closer to 70-ish. Uh, like I think most matches are in the 70 most individual games are only going to go up to something like 70%. So if you think that it's 70% and it's a best of 3, maybe that does justify the the line going a little bit higher, but it's it's really tough to see Dominus winning a match against LGD. Um and the reason for that is the the jungle matchup. So Peanut is one of the better junglers in my opinion on this patch and in china he can carry the game and is very aggressive like he's the perfect kind of jungler for this meta even though he doesn't always play the meta champions he has that play style where he's constantly forcing the issue and forcing the enemy team into tough decisions and that's like just his play style so i like lgd tonight a lot uh if garvey plays i think that does increase the the upside for natural because Dominus could theoretically win through that lane. Natural did have some pretty good matches last split. Uh, I think when he was like playing Wukong and stuff like that. Uh, so I am somewhat, af I am somewhat, af not afraid, but reserved because of because of that. In the mid lane, I think uh, Shie came from Dominus, right? And he's better than Twyla. So I could see Shie going off against Dominus. I don't know who would have more revenge or who would want revenge more. I like the revenge game narrative. It's a bunch of bullshit, but it's fun to think about. Um, I don't know how that breakup happened. I don't know if uh, Dominus was like, we like Twyla better, so you can go wherever you want. Or if Shie was like, I'm better than that guy and you're not playing me full time, 
get rid of me. So, if anybody knows, let me know. But, like I said, it's just a revenge, or a revenge game narrative. Not a huge deal. Not going to change anybody's opinions, I hope. Um, then we have Kramer and Mark against Helper and Mitsuki. Kramer and Mark are better. I think Mark was from Dominus too, right? So, yeah. A couple of Dominus players going up against Dominus. I think LGD wins this one easily. So in DraftKings, I will want exposure to to LGD, and I will want to use their top laner and support because I think they have a very good chance of going 2-0. But I am somewhat afraid because of um, because of Garvey. Like I'm not 100 percent sure if he's going to be uh, able to dominate his matchup, or if, or if Longshi or Garvey go back and forth. All right, next up, Top Esports against OMG. That is Top Esports, a 94% favorite uh, against OMG. That's minus $1,667. Not sure how you feel about risking that much money to win $100, but personally, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, that's just insane. So there's no reason to think that OMG wins. Uh, if OMG wins, then we're going to have all of the conspiracy theorists coming out again talking about how the LPL is fixed. Uh, I do think that it's a non-0% chance they win, but it's not something that I'm going to spend any money on at all uh, on the side of OMG. So all of my lineups that I make tonight, if I make lineups, I mean, this seems like a pretty horrible con uh, seems like a pretty horrible slate of games. Uh, I might just sit this one out, just not worth it. Uh, but if I make lineups, it's going to be top esports with LGD. Just rotate and see if it fits. That's a weird thing to say. Uh, <laughs> um, I guess you could theoretically put some Dominus players into those lineups, like a 4-2-1, 4-1-2, 3-3-1, 3-1-2, like 3-1-2, 3-2-2. There are some different ways to build it, but like you have to understand, I, I said this, I think I said this to somebody on Twitter yesterday. When you're building a DraftKings lineup, you're basically making a parlay within a parlay you're saying i think that these two teams will win and from these two teams these players are going to be the highest combination of players that score uh fantasy points on the day so that's for a two that's for a two team stack if you're doing a three team parlay where both where there's two winners and a loser, but the loser is going to have an 80 carry that scores more than one of the winners. Like you understand how like complex that gets um, to like kind of explain. So I think that in the long run, that is not a good way to build lineups. We're stuck in that position because of the two game slates. Um, so if that's the kind of lineup you want to build, like that's how Kukumunga won uh, yesterday. He had four players from world elite, two players from East R and then one player from Billy Billy Gaming and it just happened it just so happened that it was a three game series the kill score was roughly close for those two teams Wink did really well for one team Fofo did really well for the other team or relatively well for the other team um but like we're playing with very slim margins here when we're when we're making those kinds of lineups so I think that if your goal is to not be duplicated and to give yourself a chance at first place or something like that I mean, technically, yes, those lineups do have a shot. But if you're going to run out, like if you if you had to pick a lineup to run out every single night for a month straight, that's not the kind of roster construction that's going to be the most profitable unless you get one of those 1% outcomes. So I'm not telling you that you should or shouldn't do it. I just think that the two-game slate forces us into this situation and nobody likes it. Uh, so that is basically it i think that lgd and top esports should both win pretty easily today uh if you want to get different good for you uh but otherwise that's it for this video uh the lck starts up on the 17th and that is when we will start getting larger slates for lpl plus lck i can't wait very exciting um for that league to come back as well um but yeah if you if you have any suggestions for the channel, uh, just let me know what you think I should be doing. 
Um, I'm trying to tweak the esports center stuff continuously because it, it, it is pretty time consuming, and I've I'm starting to realize there is like a small uh, there's a uh, there is a vocal minority that loves esports center and keeps telling me that they love esports center. But most of you are here for like picks and stuff like that, so I'm trying to make both groups happy so that everyone just watches the entire video instead of skipping around. Um, and of course, as always, uh, Patreon is still an option for everybody. If they want to support the channel, you get access to Discord. So once you sign up for Patreon, message me on Twitter or uh, on Patreon, and I'll get you a Discord link as soon as I can. Um, but other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.